Okay, uh, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna give you uh, the continuation of uh, our lecture part two of uh, photolithography. So in the previous uh, class, we have covered uh, requirements in a lithographic processing and uh, some properties of the uh, photolysis that we normally use in the fabrication process. So in this uh, slot, uh, I'm going to teach you about chemically amplified photolysis, or we normally call it uh, CA, or some even call it CAR, chemically amplified resist. So this um, photolysis is typically used in uh, DUV process, and we use it to pattern a, a small feature uh, in which uh, short shorter wavelength of light is required if you compare to um, eye line processing. So uh, typically for the uh, CA resist, uh, we use DUV of uh, 248 nanometer or 193, uh, where excimer lasers are used as the illumin illumination source. So the intensity required from the DUV uh, processing from 248 or 193 is typically uh, lower in comparison to eye line, uh, which uh, uses a uh, mercury lamp. And eye line and DUV uh, use uh, different types of uh, photoresist. Normally for eye line processing, uh, we use uh, DNQ uh, Novolac uh, photoresist, uh, where for DUV, uh, 248 or 193, we use um, a chemically amplified photoresist. So to be able to activate the resist, uh, catalysis effect is uh, required in order to increase the sensitivity of the photoresist. Uh, this takes place when we expose the, the CA resist to the DUV light. So that means uh, when we when we do the exposure process, uh, uh, the catalysis process is going to take place. Uh, so what's happening actually is a uh, photo acid is uh, generated uh, during the exposure process. And uh, this processing uh, continues into the PEB where uh, upon the baking process uh, of the post-exposure bake, um, the acid diffusion from the from the resist uh, will cause uh, higher catalytic reaction in the photoresist, right? So, um, so what happens next is acid remove a protection group from the CA resist, and then um, the exposed part of the photoresist will then be exposed, uh, will, will then be removed by the developer uh, during the development process. So there are a few requirements of uh, photoresist in the uh, lithography process. So, uh, so this is only a few of them. So the first one is obviously we need a high resolution uh, resist. So when we talk about high resolution, you want to print um, patterns with accurate details, uh, right? So especially if you if you go for a uh, lower feature size. Uh, sub uh, 10 nanometer, for example, of course, it has to be super accurate. Uh, usually, thinner resist has a higher resolution in comparison to thicker resist. Uh, and then uh, when you use thinner resist, uh, the etching is usually lower because you, you don't want to etch so much of the resist because it's thin uh, to begin with. And, and then the uh, implantation Ion implantation resistance will also be lower. We're going to look at this uh, when we talk about uh, ion implantation process uh, later on. Another requirement of the photoresist is it has to have a high edge resistance. So you want the resist to be etched in, in the right areas, and you don't want other areas to be etched. So therefore, uh, the areas that you want to etch, uh, in this case, uh, have to have high edge resistance and they have to stay after the uh, CED process. And then uh, the resist has um, to have good addition as well. So 
even though uh, we have learned about the uh, incorporation of uh, HMDS on the on the wafer or on the oxide before resist spinning process, the resist itself uh, has to have good addition to the HMDS. And also, resist uh, needs to have a wide process latitude. So uh, this means that uh, you don't want the resist to change uh, thickness or to change the critical dimension on the final features uh, abruptly uh, in a very, you know, in a very narrow uh, region of focus or dosage from the scanner, for example. So you want the the, the resulting features and the focus to be to be quite uh, planar, if you like, if to be quite uh, similar. Uh, for the wide range of uh, focus and energy doses. So this is when we call it uh, as having a high uh, wide process, process latitude, okay? And there are a few factors uh, which can be measured to, to see whether uh, the performance of the resist is good or not. There are a few factors here that you can see on the slide. A resolution, addition, uh, sensitivity of the resist uh, exposure source. So this one is uh, in relation to the uh, scanner system with like dosage focus and so on and so forth. And the resist have to based on what we want it to, to do. And process latitude as well, pinhole formation, uh, especially when you do the spin coating process, exposure development, we don't want the resist to produce pinholes uh, in the in the fur. So uh, pinholes will be regarded as defect in the layer. And particle contamination levels, we don't want to, we don't want to have uh, particles and contamination from the photoresist as well uh, during the processing. Step coverage need to be, it needs to be very good. So step coverage here means uh, we're not going to see any problem if you spin photoresist on planar structures, but we'll see this problem of step coverage when we have uh, features or, or already have features on the underlying layers. So the resist uh, in this case um, has to cover uh, the features or the steps uh, confirmly and uniformly and still deliver the, the performance as expected. And finally, the thermal uh, flow of the resist during the processing because uh, throughout the processing, the photoresist is going to be exposed to uh, hot plate processing, cool plate processing, so thermal component uh, is also there in the in the resist. So when we talk about uh, resolution capability of the resist, so we're talking about smallest opening or space that can be produced in a photoresist. So we've discussed last time when we do the uh, lithography process, you can either print lines uh, or holes. So in this case, if you talk about holes, then we're talking about the opening that can be printed uh, with a minimum size. And then if you're talking about uh, space, you're actually talking about the lines that can be printed uh, by using the photoresist. So uh, in this case, photoresist doesn't work alone. So it also depends on the exposure source and the de development process that we use uh, in the whole thermal process. So when you say um, lithography, so the, the coating will always be dependent on exposure and development. So the, the coating uniformity is, um, and, and the quality overall is also dependent on the exposure as well. So they are actually interrelated. And when you talk about expo exposure, so it also depends on the coating of the resist and also dependent on the development process of the photoresist. And also, if you talk about the development process, uh, coating and exposure play uh, equal roles as well. All right, so thinner layer usually uh, usually has better resolution. So you want uh, you want the resist to have a pinhole free, um, all right? And uh, the, the resist thickness has to be enough to withstand uh, etching or implantation barrier when we do uh, the next processing processing later on, right? So in this table, we can compare uh, 
some properties of uh, positive and negative photoresis. Uh, we discussed last time that a polymer uh, in the negative photoresis uh, consists of polyisoprene. And um, in the positive resist, we have uh, Novolite resin. Uh, if you talk about photoreaction, so negative resist is based on polymerization. Uh, we discussed last time that uh, upon exposure to the um, illumination source or the scanner with the right wavelength, the right dosage, right focus. So we're going to harden the exposed area and uh, uh, the unexposed areas are going to be left uh, soluble uh, during the development process. On the other hand, uh, if you talk about a uh, positive photoresist, the photoreaction is based on photosolubilization. So where uh, this is actually the opposite of what happens in negative resist, where the exposed areas will be soluble and the unexposed areas will not be soluble. Uh, sensitizer in negative resist, it provides free radicals for polymer cross-linking during the exposure process. So this actually induces the polymerization of the resist and cause it to be uh, hardened uh, before the development process. And on the other hand, if we talk about positive resist, uh, it's going to change the resist firm to, to base soluble so that it can be developed successfully and completely uh, during the development process. Uh, when we talk about additives, uh, both negative and photoresist, uh, positive photoresist use uh, dyes. Right, um, two parameters are used to define properties of photoresist. Uh, one of them is contrast, and the next one is called CMTF, or critical uh, modulation transfer function. So what are these? So contrast refers to ability of the resist uh, to differentiate between different levels of light intensities from the exposure system. Uh, so when it receives uh, different exposure levels from the scanner system, it will need to react accordingly so that uh, <coughs> you eventually can uh, have your wanted desired areas to be removed and, and not removed. So what's actually happening is um, when, we, when we expose uh, the photoresist to different amount of lights, in terms of the intensities, uh, dosage as well. Um, and then we we uh, expose the photoresist for a fixed amount of time. Uh, you can actually see after the exposure process, or in fact, after the development process, the amount of resist remaining after the process will be different uh, upon exposure to different levels of the, of the uh, intensities from the scanner. So we're going to see this in the next slide. So uh, on this slide, you can see uh, on the left hand side is uh, the fraction of resist remaining for positive resist uh, against exposure dose on the x axis. And on the right hand side, you can see fraction of resist remaining for negative photoresist uh, against exposure dose on the x axis as well. So now we assume that we are using both um, uh, same level of exposure dose uh, in millijoule per cm squared for, for the both positive and negative uh, photoresist. So let's see on the left hand side. So what's actually happening? So uh, on the left hand side, we use a positive photoresist. So you can see that when we increase the uh, exposure dose of the photoresist from 1 to 10 millijoule and then eventually to 100 millijoule, uh, different fractions of resist uh, remain on the, on the wafer after the development process. So moving from 0 to 1 millijoule, if you can see the fraction of the resist there, so you can see here, so the fraction of the resist remaining is equals to 1, which means which means the energy from the scanner or from the exposure is not enough to cause the resist to be soluble. So in this case, if you talk about photosolubilization that we have seen in the uh, first few slides is now in the table. 
So the photosolubilization is not happening when uh, you expose the resist from zero to one millijoule per cm squared. So basically, there's no reaction within the photoresist and no resist is soluble after the development process. So when we increase from one to 10 millijoule, for example, so near to seven or eight millijoule here, uh, per cm squared, you can see that there the reaction starts to take place and you can see Q0 here, so which implies the, the, the point where the reaction starts to happen. So for example, if you increase the exposure dose further to 10 millijoule per cm squared, uh, you can see that the fraction of resist remaining after the process is now equals to somewhere 0 0.6, right? So 0 0.6. So that means out of the original uh, thickness of the resist that you use, um, fraction of the resist remaining of uh, after the process at this uh, 10 millijoule per cm squared dose is about uh, 0 0.6 or 60%. So, for example, if you've got uh, 100 nanometer of photoresist, then you can literally say that you still have about 60% or 60 nanometer of the resist uh, remaining on, on the wafer after the process. So, to be able to completely remove the photoresist uh, from the surface after the development process, you need to go beyond uh, 100 millijoule per cm squared, or it's labeled as a QF. So at this point, when you expose your uh, photoresist with at least 100 millijoule per cm squared, so you can see that the fraction of resist remaining is now uh, equals to zero. So which means that if you got 100 nanometer of photoresist uh, spun on the on the on your wafer. Uh, before the exposure and development process. So after the development process, after the CAD process, uh, you will end up with no resist in the soluble area. So that means the resist is completely removed at this point. So this means that uh, to be able to completely remove the resist in your desired areas, you need to expose the areas, you need to expose the resist with at least 100 millijoule per cm squared or else you will have resist remaining um, everywhere on the on the on the wafer. So on the other hand, if you look at the negative photoresist, the mechanism is similar, but uh, it goes in opposite direction because uh, it's based uh, on uh, cross-linking of the polymer, so it's no longer based on a photo uh, solubilization as uh, what's happening on the on the photo positive resist. So to be able to uh, harden the resist on the, on the structure, so if you expose your uh, resist with about two millijoule per cm squared or labeled as Q0 here, so the fraction of resist remaining is still equals to zero. So the hardening is not yet happening. So if you go for 10 millijoule, so some polymerization has uh, been taking place. So you have something like 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 fraction of photoresist remaining after the development process. So that also means that the uh, cross-linking or the hardening of the, of the photoresist is not complete. To be able to initiate a complete um, hardening of the photoresist, a cross-linking of the polymer, so you, in, in this case, need to expose the photoresist with at least 100 millijoule per cm squared uh, from the scanner. And at this point, if you expose the resist with at least 100 millijoule per cm squared, you can see that the fraction of resist remaining is somewhere about 1.0 or, or fraction of resist remaining on the wafer now uh, equals to what is intended. So in this case, for example, if you, if you spun 100 nanometer of photoresist, so after the hard, after the hardening of the resist by the by the uh, exposure process, so after the process you're gonna be left with exactly 100 nanometer on the wafer and no resist is removed uh, in the intended areas, right? And on the other hand, uh, the areas that you want to be soluble will be soluble and will be gone from the structure.
right? This is also uh, another representation of the very same thing as we've discussed on the previous page. So uh, Y axis shows the fraction of resist remaining on the, on the wafer or on the structure. So it's normalized. So that means one equals to the original thickness as as pan coated. So um, at this point, if you look at um, the the value when your fraction of resistance remaining equals to zero, or in the previous page we've called that as QF. So this point of QF is called dose to clear. So dose to clear means in this case a minimum dose required for the resist to be cleared off the surface uh, after the development process, after the CAD process uh, completed. The contrast of the photoresist can be judged from the, from the gradient of this slope, right? Uh, contrast and dose sensitivity. So the, the higher the contrast and the sensitivity of the photoresist uh, will show up as a uh, a higher gradient on this curve. But on the other hand, if you if you got um, low gradient, so that means the contrast and the sensitivity of the photoresist uh, are not so high. For positive photoresist, material exposed to low light will be will not be attacked by the developer. Material exposed to large doses will be completely removed, as what we've seen uh in the contrast graph is now right so intermediate doses will result in partial removal so in this case you can see that your fraction of this uh, resist remaining may be equal to uh, 0 0.4 0 0.5 or even 0 0.9 because it's not uh, completely uh, removed the contrast is the slope of this curve and is given by a contrast equals to one over log of qf over q naught uh, and QF and Q naught are as labeled on our previous curve. So if you talk about G line and I line resist, uh, a typical contrast range is somewhere uh, about two to three and QF values of 100 mJ per cm squared. You can find out for, for DUV, for I line, for uh, ARF and also for uh, EUV cases. So the contrast is not a constant, but depends on a few uh, process parameters such as uh, development chemistry, bake time, uh, temperatures before and after the exposure, uh, wavelength of the light underlying structure. So there is no one uh, factor that uh, determines the contrast. So it's a function of many uh, process parameters. So we want to have high contrast, as high contrast as possible in order to produce um, the sharpest edges as in the developed pattern. So we've discussed that we typically end up with positive profile like that in, in the final patterns. You don't want it to be something like that, or you, you don't want it to be rough. You want it to be you know as, as clean as possible, even though it's slightly positive. So this can be uh, seen on, on, this, uh, on this graph. So it shows a relative exposure dose on the y-axis against the position, if you like. So this is the aerial image form on the rises after the exposure process. It's not yet developed, so there's no physical structure yet, but it's somehow, somehow embedded in the rises. Or we call it uh, an aerial image that is going to be developed uh, eventually. So you can see uh, from the caption here, so the quality of the aerial image and the resist contrast combine uh, to produce resist resist edge profile. So the left hand side here shows a sharp aerial image and steep edges. In the, uh, the, the, the gradients given by the gray areas here. So on the right hand side, uh, we can see a poorer aerial image and the resulting uh, gradient is very, very poor because the slope is quite low, so the contrast and the sensitivity of photoresist is poor in this case. Right, another properties of the resist is called uh, CMTF or uh, modulation transfer function uh, is defined in two points in the lithographic system. You can see here the measurement of dark versus light intensities in the aerial image produced by the projection system uh, and also CMTF, 
a measure of exposed versus unexposed regions in the high contrast image focus on the photoresist. So the equation is given by uh, this uh, QF minus Q0, uh, QF plus Q0. And uh, you can replace the, the contrast that we have calculated in the previous uh, page here into this equation to be able to, to get the result. The CMTF, if CMTF is the minimal minimum optical transfer function in order to resolve a pattern in the resist. So for each uh, type of photoresist, I line, G line, or DUV, or ARF, EUV, so uh, each uh, photoresist has its own value of CMTF. CMTF. So from, from the value of CMTF, we know that um, the function uh, required by the resist in order to be resolved. So that means in order to be properly developed, between the space or holes, for example. So this value will be critical. So I'll just stop here for, for this particular slot. Then uh, we'll discuss uh, what is your understanding about this uh, topic in our next lecture. All right, bye-bye and salam alaikum.